What is up, my caustic crocodiles? Today I'm going to be going over my alligator oscillator song and the production techniques that I used for it. So let's just jump straight into this. So I'm actually going to start by do by going just piece by piece on the song. Usually I go piece by piece by instrument, but I think this will be better suited to go just uh, in the sections of the songs. Uh, so first of all, it sounds like this. Okay, so let's start off with the uh, with the oscillator on how I actually got the main riff for this. Uh, so to it, to explain this, we need to go into another application called VCV Rack. All right, so here I am in VCV Rack, which is a free uh, free software, uh, and it's a virtual uh, modular synth. So all I did was have an oscillator here. Um, uh, VCA voltage control amp and then an audio out so all I have to do is take a saw and bring it into the VCA and then into the speakers and then I can mess with the frequency on here so I can take a saw put it to the in take the out bring it to left mono So you notice if you hover over this, it'll show the frequency. So I used something that was, I think, it might have been like 38 hertz either, or 40. It was somewhere around 38 or 40 hertz. Now hertz is how many cycles per second it's, uh, it's oscillating at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this in and go straight into the uh, wave editor of Caustic. And I'm going to hit record and just get a couple second sample. Okay, we got our sample. So I'm gonna make this a little bit louder. Let's probably do that twice. So listen. All right, cool. So I'm gonna take about a second or a minute of it or a, a second of it and put this lock so it locks in. 
to play. Right? How come it's not locking into place? There we go. Okay, so you notice how these these each one of these lines right here, that's a cycle. So if you zoom in real quick, that's the beginning of the cycle. And then it ends right when it goes again. So there's 40 of these per second, 40 hertz. So what I'm going to do is go to edit, uh, no, no, file, save selection. I'm going to name it saw 40 HZ. So I hit done. Now I can exit out of this. And if I go to a PCM synth, I could long press the sample, go to my editor, look under uh, saw 40 hertz. There it is. Load it. And then I put, I think, a high pass filter on here. So this was, I need to change this. So you go to mode and go to play intro plus loop forward. And then you go here. Yeah, I think that's good enough. Yep, there's no weird hesitations in between or clicky stuff. So this is good. And then you... Now you can just uh, 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 use this as an instrument. So that's what I did to be able to create this. Okay, so if we look at the actual instrument that I use, you'll notice that I use two oscillators. There's oscillator one, which I set the filter to uh, inverted bandpass, which just takes the... Uh, it's the same thing as it would be like a bandpass filter, but it just flips it, uh, flips it upside down, or it's like reversed. Uh, so that was for the first one, and I put the settings to right here. Uh, and, and I didn't use any envelopes, uh, for the, for the filter, just put a, put, put a, uh, it to a, a certain spot. And, uh, I did this one on a high pass, but I do have automation to it to where it kind of messes around. I also have, uh, a, what's it called? Um. There's a comb filter and a phaser on this, but I have the phaser off it sometimes as well as the chorus. So sometimes this is just by itself with no thing, but there's always going to be a comb filter on the second one. So if you listen to this, oh, this is, hold on. I wonder why this shouldn't be, okay, there we go. Now this shouldn't be on. Let's actually go down. Oh, I am at the bottom. This should be off. No, it's on. That is weird. Okay, well, looks like this is how I did it then. Uh, I could have sworn that I had the uh, phasers off for the most part. But I guess it's the other way around. I have them on for the most part and then off sometimes. So this is what the first one sounds like. Uh, and so what you're hearing is the LFO of the, um, of the phaser, because a phaser, I believe, is just a comb filter with an LFO in it. I think that's what a phaser is. Um, so that's why you're hearing that automation within it when I just hit down the keys. And the oscillator 2 sounds like this. So if you look down at my pattern, it's extremely simple. You'll notice that I only use one two, three keys, three different keys to create this. Um, but the, the magic lies within the, uh, the automation of this as well as the, um, uh, the effect. So if we, uh, solo this, I guess we don't have to solo it. We can just play the first thing. Uh, so that was, so here is both of them. This creates the bass for it, while this is just mostly the pitch. So that's what I just started off with, and then we can get to the drums here. For the kick, I layered them. I used these two. Let's go to one and the fifth. So first one. Stupid thing. 
in the fifth. I love layering things. Uh, if you notice already that there is a, uh, uh, what's the right word? Um, you'll notice that I am layering things and that is a big uh, priority for me to do things, to create certain tones and frequencies and moods. It, sometimes you need to blend more than just one thing together to create something. So this is what I did. I usually layer my kicks uh, sometimes my snares, you know, it, it creates a bigger sound and it's more full and you can just pick and choose, you know, what you want to incorporate with this. So I used that and this together. And remember, as always, we are not competing. We are assisting. So in this case, this one is assisting this one. This one gives it the kind of a knock. This is more texture. Uh, so that is my kick. And as always, you have your kick on a different layer. Um, so you usually want to separate your low frequencies. And then here's your like mids and highs for this. So here's my kick. And then here's my snare in the hats down here. So we can just listen to this part. The exceptionally clever alligator. This Let's actually turn this off. Let's mute this so we can hear this without the sample. So I uh, have the snare and the clap together on there. Uh, yep, layering. Once again, I layered that. And uh, with the occasion, I have a kick in here. <laughs> I had no idea I had a kick in here. That is... Not very cool of me to do that. I had, this whole time, I had no idea I accidentally left the kick in here. Huh, interesting. You learned something new, huh? So, anyways, uh, that was what I did for this. And the only r difference between the A1 and the A2 is I added the hi-hats. So, if we go here and then look at the A1 and then A2, all I do is add the hi-hats. I guess I added another one right there. But these are just hats. If we go... Oh, the other side. Just hats are added. Uh, so this is how the beginning of the song starts. And then I have a sample from... There was this uh, documentary on YouTube about how this crocodile... No, alligator. The alligator was... Uh, so there's these birds around and they're real picky about what they use to build their nest. And the, crocod and the cro alligator had his... Uh, put a branch or a twig on his nose and just had it almost like as if he was skimming the surface of the water and the birds all, oh, I'm going to use that for my nest. And the, al and the alligator gets up and eats him. So uh, that's why I there are certain samples within this that I use that explains things. Um, I guess I should probably go down to how many samples do I have? I have quite a bit. Um, but they are, uh, just different parts of one big thing. For, for the exceptionally clever alligator, there may be a rare and very special item on the menu. That was the bird he was talking about. Is it just coincidence? Or is this, or is this? Had some risers. Reptile. A master of deception. He is a master of deception. He was talking about the branch that he used or the twig on his nose. He's a master of deception. This 400 pound reptile. With the brain the size of a walnut. Master of deception. With a brain the size of a walnut. I just have just different parts of it because I use different things for each thing. So this is one of my main complaints when I use samples within caustic is you can't create audio files with it it's just a sample that you use that has to begin the same thing if you start that sample 
you can't take the sample and let's say just chop it up uh, right here on the spot and use the middle of it. You have to create a whole nother sample with it, get the root key down, and uh, it's just a tedious process. Uh, so we could just listen to this part. The exceptionally clever alligator, this 400 ton reptile, reptile, a master of deception, master of deception. So we go down to this. All it is is just bouncy. I think I did an auto pan on this. I think I did. Let's go down to bouncy and see what's on bouncy. Bouncy auto pan and a delay. Okay, that's what I use for that. And it's the same thing I did for... Uh, it's the same... Dun, 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 dun. I guess not. No, I do have a... It's not the same. Uh, no, it is. Yeah, it is. So if we go here, uh, we can liken it to this one. Yeah, see? Except for we. I don't have the last part because I used the formant filter for this. I think that's Plucky Talky. Yeah, where's my formant? Oreo. Okay, here we go. So all it is is we can go down to this and loop right here, and we can watch this. What's going on here? It's just the O's right now. I think I have a chorus effect on this. That's all it is for the format, but I do have automation on it, but that's because some of them change, which I'll get to a little bit later here at A2. Uh, so all I do is have this riff going for eight bars. Oh, I guess I do have that right here. It goes to E D E E. Um... So notice here, it's, uh, it goes from O to the E's. So that's what I did for that. Uh, let's go to right here. What's going on? All right, here. Let's go to the plucky talky. So here's Plucky. And I think I have automation on the back part. Yep, see, so it goes here. Let's uh, loop this section and then watch it. Watch the automation. That's all that is. Uh, it just cranks up the uh the amount of uh i think this is just voltage is what it's doing it's like a gain for this so all you do is just bring up the voltage on it and it creates a different effect on it just notice the difference now watch until the thing goes big. Okay, now it's big. Now listen to it. That's the difference with it, that it does. And I believe it's the voltage that is uh, making it that way. So let's go down to the... I used some FX here. Let's just solo these. That's all it is. And then this one. Yep, so those are just the ones that I use. But notice that there's no more hi-hats right here. It's in A2, and it still goes. So there's hi the hi-hats going, and then it stops. Oh, that is in A2. This is in A3. So that is... The reason that I do that is so you can you can especially the the cop sound. Listen to it again. 
I took the plucky talky thing right there. You can see where the line is missing in the thing. This is where the cop signal or the siren hits. I didn't I wanted that that siren to stand out, so I took the uh I took the uh what's it called off of it? A uh I made sure that I didn't put a note in here just so that would stand out. So obviously the uh uh, the hi-hats are out of this, and this is just pretty much the kick and the snares, right? And some claps. Uh, that stupid kick, man. <laughs> uh, yep. So, uh, you know, I had a feeling that the kick was a bit loud in this song. And I'm like, man, the kick is just gnarly in this. It, it kind of drowns some stuff out. I had some regrets of the mixing that I did on here and I was wondering I'm like why is that kick so loud I'm like I turned it down I try to do stuff I'm like well maybe it's a good thing but uh anyways that's interesting that I found out I found that out um let's see here I wonder if I EQ'd this how oh, I did it I didn't even EQ it because <laughs> that's because I usually I don't know, man. These samples that I use are pretty good, and you usually don't really need to that much. Um, you know? But whatever. I'm not the best at mixing. Uh, let's go to this next part. Let's take this off. So, did the same thing with the format filter as I did over here. Um, and then just use different, uh, effects on this one. So we used that noise and that. That's all it is there. Listen to it one more time. So let's go to the vocoder. You could obviously tell what I did with the drums, you know, all it is is the kick. Um, so let's listen to this, and it's a horrible, horrible thing. I, once again, I used my crappy phone to make a crappy recording, very spur of the moment, let's just get this done. Like, I'm very undisciplined when it comes to vocals and stuff. I mean, I have a microphone that I could use, but most of the time I just use your... Uh, so, in all reality, the microphone on your phone is actually pretty darn good and if you're just using like just vocal samples stuff like that if you're not like creating a whole like song where you have lyrics and all that stuff like and you're only doing little small samples usually you can get away with using your phone and this is just an example of that listen how bad this is alligator oscillator alligator oscillate <laughs> uh, i would love to see a video of me recording that <laughs> Just like someone secretly records me do it. <laughs> That'd be funny. So you can see right here, if I zoom in, all this little disturbance here, this is what you're hearing. That's the... <sighs> you're hearing in the background, the background noise. Alligator oscillator. It sounds like I'm by the ocean. Alligator oscillator. Alligator oscillate. That's all it is, man. So if you're having... Uh, issues with you think your voice doesn't sound good just remember this video and how i sound so we can get out of this so what i did was i the high frequency bypasses on so let's just loop this and then listen to it <sighs> that is what's happening here i automated it so it's uh alligator is about down here Let's just listen to it again. That's how I created that part. Uh, so that goes for a little bit. I think I also did another formant filter up here. Sounds a bit weird. Yeah, e. What does e mean? Yeah, O and an H. Let's see what vowels I used for this. No, I use the E. -E. Huh. All right. So, uh, yeah, alligator oscillator, da 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 da. And then here comes another section, but I need to 
turn this off so it actually plays. For the exceptionally clever alligator, there may. Okay, yeah, so I just went up with the thing. So here's A4. Let's go to A5. And then A6. A7. What did I do? I think I did 4, 5, 6 for this. 4, 3, and 6. Let's just listen to this. For the exceptionally clever alligator. I'm going to turn the thing off so we can just concentrate on the formant. Mute this. Let's go back to the formant filter. Here we go. Okay. So I obviously start at a lower, lower thing and it went up as I did. So let's just loop this again and we can watch this happening. See another key up. I went up a semitone on the first one and then two semitones on the other one and then I start and I believe on this next one it'll start down again and then go up. Yep, see? And then it went down to that first semitone and then went da 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 da, -da all the way up. So that's how I created this, I think I used 64th notes, or 32nd notes, yep. Okay. So, and then here is the sample I used. For the exceptionally clever alligator, there may be a rare and very special item on the menu. Uh-huh. And then, get rid of that, let's see. Turn this back up. This is for the exception. This was an A3, A1. Hmm. Okay, yeah, so I just did oscillator and then oscillate, but I did add an 808 here. It's probably CM Gowers. Uh yep. Because I wanted some, this song doesn't have very much bass. I wanted a part where it would really thump. And I usually try to make that a habit uh, in my songs. There has to be at least one part where the, the, where the sub is just going to start uh, screaming at you. Uh, so this is the part that I chose. So I, once again, I'm only using the same instruments that I did before, but I'm picking and choosing where I put it. So just listen to the spark. So I switched up the pattern on here. Uh, I took the middle part out and the back part of this. So I could get the, um, so my vocals would stand out all while the 808 is still, is still hitting on each one. Um, and I'm using to to be able to take back some of the patterns. If you go to your thing, just make sure if you just open up caustic, this is going to be orange. But if you click on it, so if it's orange, see, it's just a full bar. But if you take it off, it's you get four, four little bars, each beat of the bar. Like if you were to change the signature, watch how many bars you get now. You'll get six. So now you have six per What's it called? But this isn't the correct time signature. We're in a 4-4. Four, four. So that's why you get four little things. It, it's, it separates the beats of it, which is really good for uh, to uh, for editing. But it's... Um, unfortunately, you can only go from back to up to make it shorter. So, like, if I wanted to make this shorter, you can only go this way. Or you could stretch it out. But, like, it's... Um, if I wanted the middle of this... I would have to create a whole nother pattern to have just the middle of this because you can't get rid of what's in front of it, unfortunately. And that's one of the things that's a real drawback with caustic, amongst other things. Uh, okay, so did the thing again here. Uh, added a riser, or maybe it was a fall. Well, no, sinker, that's what they call it. Uh, 
right here until it goes to this little breakdown part where I change the automation and I've so I have automation in both the vocoder where I have the dry and it goes up but I also have a distortion on the yeah right here and I have the post and the amount on there because when you bring the amount up it gets louder so I had to bring the post down a little bit on here so we can watch watch how the uh, distortion goes up on this let me just loop this section so i can show you both parts of it actually let's look at the vocoder part first and you can see how the dry will go up right here okay now we can look at the uh Oh, I guess I did the the delay on there too because I wanted to the last oscillate to delay so it goes into the uh, to the next part. But we can watch the automation of the distortion. Wait a minute. Oh, you got to start it from the beginning, or it won't play. Or no, that's not true. I it could. It's weird how it starts. Uh, it chooses which one. I think it's because of. Uh, let me go to there to the bottom of this. Let me look. Yeah, see, this is broken up, so it has to start on this. This would probably be the second bar. Yeah, so notice how this goes for only two bars, and then there's another one. That's why you can't start it right here. Watch, it won't play. But if you start it right here, because this is a new trigger note, it will play. That's why. So let's watch the distortion. You also have, so notice how it, it turned off because I didn't want the oscillate part to have any distortion with it. I just wanted to have pure vocode on there. Uh, okay, so here's the next part, and I believe this is where I just do the samples. Uh, but I also did a fill with the drums. How come it's not playing the sample? Oh, it is. This is the uh, riser, or it's a, I don't know what it is. Oh, it's a sinker. Let's just play it from right here. And then I just uh, added more samples in between this, and then I let it ride at the end so we could just kind of listen to what I did here. Is it just coincidence? Or is this 400 pound reptile? With a brain the size of a walnut, a master of deception. So if you notice right here how this thing goes up, it's noteworthy that when I export this uh, to put it into the caustic mastering, I will turn down the volume on here. But since I have automation to this, I'll usually just turn down the post of this, and it dramatically affects what the limiter is doing. Or I could just turn down the pre and the limiter because it doesn't matter really how quiet it is. You can always jack it up in the mastering system. And they say that you should always have about uh, negative four on your exports 
uh, to be able to go into like your whatever mastering thing it is. So just so how you have, so you'll have room to play with. If you go in there and your stuff is hitting at at, you know, negative point uh, five, even negative one decibels, you're not going to have too much room to play around with because then your limiter. Um, when you put the the your uh, brick wall limiter on there to make sure that you don't go over a certain decibel, I usually put about negative uh, 0.5 as my ceiling. Um, you're not going to have too much. Then your limiters are going to start compressing too much if you, uh, say, if you need to bring up uh, certain frequencies in there. You just need room to play with. And uh, so it's recommended that you put it at... Um, negative four but it's hard to know on here so i just put it usually super quiet so it's bouncing around right here uh when i go to export it and then i could always just turn it up it's no big deal uh so that's pretty much it, it for the song hope you guys learned something and um i'm gonna make some more uh videos like this about some of my production techniques for my song so i will see you in the next one Daniel, you